So here's a fundamental problem with electronics, with, with any sort of circuitry, with any kind of system, really. It's not just electronics. That's, that's one way we can look at it. But there's this problem where you pour energy into a system, and because of things like entropy, the output you get is less than the energy you put in. Now, of course, we know we cannot create or destroy energy, correct? Right. Yeah, it's one of those laws of thermodynamics. And if you try and break them, then the thermodynamics police show up. So actually, it just means that you cannot break that law. So if you can't break that law, if you pour energy into a system and you're not getting as much output as you're getting input, it's because you're losing energy through some other uh, uh, action. Normally, in, in almost every system that we're really familiar with, that's heat, right? Heat right. becomes a byproduct. Energy goes to produce heat which means that whatever you were trying to do is slightly less effective than what you had intended. So we see this with things like car engines are a great example. You pour in fuel, the engine burns up the fuel and converts that into power, but you don't get as much power out as you're getting uh, energy in from the source of that fuel. So same sort of thing is true with electronics. And in this case, the thing we talk about when we're talking about losing energy is called resistance. Right. That's the resistance of any particular material to the flow of electricity through that material. So, with that basic information there, now we're going to really dive into the very, very basic building blocks of electronics. Yes, because the thing is that superconductors lose no energy to resistance. Right, they have no resistance. Exactly. Uh, you know, however, they require extraordinarily cold temperatures, like on the magnitude of 39 kelvins, which is... Cold. That's cold, yeah. When you remember, it's not warm. zero Kelvin is zero molecular movement. That's absolute zero. That's that's like if you were to go into the deepest reaches of space and there are no molecules moving around. Everything is perfectly still. That's zero Kelvin. Right. Thirty nine. So, Thirty nine is equivalent to negative two hundred and thirty four degrees Celsius or negative uh, three hundred and eighty nine degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So that, that's that's pretty cold. But to understand again right, about so, resistance, let's let's take this 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 tour through the building blocks of electronics. So now, the early, early understanding we had about electricity uh, gave us some ideas that we kind of have to work around these days, like specifically the idea of current. Current is a confusing thing for someone who has doesn't understand electricity because it run the direction of current runs counter to the actual flow of electrons. Oh, right. When, when all of these terms were being created, we didn't know as much about subatomic particles, uh, a.k.a. much at all right. anything so, as so we do today. So before we understood anything about electricity, uh, we began to learn things about, uh, about charge and the idea of opposite charges attracting one another and like charges repelling one another. Now, we could have called electrons positive charge. We could have done that. There's no reason why we would have said electrons are negatively charged. It's just a word, sure. right? But that was what was considered a negative charge, and then you would ha the, the opposite would obviously be a positive charge. You know, we could have called these left and right or, or up and down or anything, really. But Banana and oboe would be my nope. choices. Everyone knows the oboe is nature's opposite to the banana. So the, the, these opposite charges, the negative and the positive, attract one another. Now, if you were to have a negatively charged material and a positively charged material, uh, you know, uh, within the same general area of each other, the potential that separated those opposite electric charges would be called voltage. All right, so that's when someone's talking about voltage, they're talking about this potential that's separating the opposite electric charges, and it's it's the capacity that they would have for doing work if those opposite charges were connected together somehow. So you would have to have something that would allow these charges to mix together. So back in the early days of electricity, before we really understood the mechanics of it, you would think that, all right, well, the, all the positively charged particles would leap over to the negative side and the negative charged particles would leap to the positive side until the charges had equalized. Equal right. And even if you had one material that was more negatively charged than the other material was positively charged, the actual negative charge would also even out throughout Eventually, the like entire osmosis, material. it yeah. would kind of work itself out. Yeah. So you would, you would end up with a larger amount of material that had a negative charge. It would just be a lower negative charge than the original material you started with, right? So... 
here we we were still thinking about this as these little charged bodies, these charged particles, both of positive and negative, zipping across. Um, and you can you can measure voltage by measuring the the two different points. So, uh, for example, uh, if you have one on the positive uh, node and one on the electric node or negative node rather. Uh, you then look at those two contact points. That's where you get your voltage. Uh, if you're using the same point of contact and you're checking different other electrodes, uh, that same contact, the contact you're using for all of them, we usually call the ground. All okay, right? sure. So that's the ground contact. Now, uh, a material that does conduct electricity is called a conductor for that very reason, right? Convenient. So, and, yes. there, and there are some materials that are very good conductors. A lot of the metals, for example, are great conductors. How, how conductive a material is depends on how easily its component atoms donate electrons. Right, right. You need to have these free electrons. Uh, free electrons are this... They, when you have an atom, obviously you have an electron shell or several shells, depending on how, uh, they, the how large the atom is. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you have free electrons that aren't tied down to anything on the outer shells then that allows electricity to pass more freely because what happens is a new electron comes in, this is oversimplifying, but a new electron comes in and essentially bonks out one of the other electrons in that outer shell, which then will bonk out one further down the line. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a lot of free electrons, then that allows this, this passage to happen fairly easily. And uh, that's what allows you to connect these, these differently charged uh, uh, materials to equal that out. We call this a current, but again, the current is the idea of positively charged particles passing from one material to the other. As we learned later, it's actually electrons that are passing through, not positive charges. Uh, but we we consider but we it stuck with the with yeah. the terminology, which means which means that when you say current, you're actually talking about the opposite direction <laughs> as what the electrons are really going through. So if you're talking about a circuit's current you are looking at it going positive to negative, when in reality the electrons are going negative to positive. Basically proving that Benjamin Franklin was not a time traveler. Right, right. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of jokes on the internet saying that we have Benjamin Franklin to blame for this misunderstanding. That, again, is oversimplifying it. Franklin was one of, but not the only uh, he was leading a thinker. person, yeah. uh, kind of, he at kinda, a certain yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, he was like the mascot for electricity <laughs> before we knew what we could do with it. Yeah. Uh, now, current we measure in amperes or amps. And an ampere is the rate of flow of one coulomb of charge in one second past some given point. And so that raises the question, what is a coulomb? Uh, it's a whole bunch of charge. Yeah, it's a lot of charge. It's actually quite a bit of charge. But, you know, we won't boil it's, it's, bog it's, down. It's not, it's not technically important. No, not for, for, not, for not for this discussion. But just know that it's a lot of charge. So uh, if you hear someone talking about a coulomb, that's a lot of charge. Uh, now, current, of course, does have the direction as the flow of positive charges. You can think of positive charge in a way as uh, vacancies, holes, positive holes that could accept an electron, right? Because if, if you have, even if you have a buildup of negative particles, if there's no positively charged part, if there's no, if aren't, if there are no vacancies uh, at another uh, point, then those that charge is just going to keep building up. It doesn't. The it's electrons not going have to nowhere carry to go. It anywhere, yeah. right? So uh, that brings us to the concept of an insulator. Now, an insulator is sort of the opposite of a conductor. This is a material that charge cannot flow through. Uh, those those component atoms, uh, their their electrons just want to stay put. Yeah, yeah. They usually the the usually you don't have any free electrons on the outside. They're all uh, they're all uh, bonded together. So that means that a, an incoming electron has nowhere to go. So with nowhere to go, then this stuff just halts the flow of electricity. And this includes things like air is an insulator. Now, granted, uh, if you were to pour enough energy into air, you could ionize it, and then it becomes a conductor. But you have to pour energy into air for that to happen. That's what happens with lightning strikes, that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's yeah, a Yeah, more it's commonly, it's, it's, it's all those things, you know, like, like rubber or glass. Or... Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we've covered... Conductors, we've covered insulators. That brings us to semiconductors. Now, this is uh, a term that a lot of people are familiar with because semiconductors, we talk about that all the time. We talk about electronics like microprocessors, uh, semiconductor plants, or a silicon wafer. That's what 
uh, a silicon chip that has a, a microprocessor on it. So what exactly is a semiconductor? Well, if you're looking at the name, it kind of gives it away. It's a material that can act like a, a conductor or it can act like an insulator. Now, naturally, if you were to just make a if you were to make like a, a wafer of silicon, it was pure silicon. It would be an insulator because those sure. those electrons are all tied up, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't push more electrons through it. However, if you were to start introducing impurities into the silicon on purpose, this isn't uh, right, right, right. Yeah, like a, like phosphorus or boron are two typical ones. Exactly. Then you are doing a process that's called doping, and in the semiconductor business, that's not a bad thing. Uh, you won't get thrown out of the Hall of Fame of semiconductors for doping. In fact, doping is necessary to make a semiconductor work. Now, if you were to dope a semiconductor with uh, atoms that have extra electrons, right, extra being free electrons in that, that outer shell, mm-hmm. I don't mean that they're actually carrying around more electrons Suitcases than Suitcases full of electrons, right, yeah, yeah. L- l- like phosphorus. Phosphorus exactly. has free electrons. Phosphorus has a free electrons. Then you would get what is called N-type semiconductor material because it has more negatively charged particles negatively available. Negatively N-type, yes. N-type, yep. Mm-hmm. Now, boron has uh, what we would call vacancies or holes that w- electrons could flow into. So if you put boron, if you introduce boron into silicon, it would have uh, availability to accept electrons. A, a positively charged or P-type. Exactly. And if you were to take both of these types of doping and apply them to one silicon wafer, so that let's just say on the left side you have N-type silicon, and on the right side you have P-type silicon, that would allow electrons to flow across in the direction from negative to positive, correct? Correct. And it would prevent the flow of electrons to go from positive to negative. Because, again, those negative electrons in the N-type uh, silicon will, will uh, repel any incoming electrons. This is the basis of a very specific type of electronic component called the diode. Diodes are important. They're kind of uh, a one-way street in electronics. And, uh, and one of the reasons this is important is when you have something like uh, alternating current. Alternating current, it's exactly what it sounds like. It alternates direction. Remember, I was saying before, current is the the flow of positive charge. Uh, In a circuit, if you have alternating current running through it, then that current is running one way and then the other way, and it alternates at thousands of times per second. Uh, We we call it hertz, those cycles per second, so it's usually like 20,000 hertz. So 20,000 times a second, it's going poo back and forth. Now, <laughs> I like that sound effect. <laughs> poo, yeah. That's the sound of electrons just zigzagging. Doing their thing. But a lot of our electronics don't run on alternating current. They need to run on direct current. So diodes are a good way of, of uh, addressing that because they will only allow charge to pass through in one direction. So even if you have an alternating current, then it's going to prevent uh, current from passing through one way and allow it to pass through the other way. Uh, that's one of the ways we use to uh, to transform alternating current into direct current. So right, and and this problem is why you get those little um, those little boxes on your uh, electric plugs to transform the uh, alternating current coming in through your through your system, through, right. the, through the power, through the power lines. Yeah, yeah, through through that uh, the pluggy thing. 